We have a question in from Canada. A gentleman has been recently diagnosed with UARS and prescribed C-Flex. And he's asking the question, should he use C-Flex or is there a reason that he should go on to use uh, bi-level therapy or some other device? Now this is a really great question because C-Flex uh, at its most um, effective setting, so to speak, could be the one that is a mimic uh, to some extent of a mini bi-level experience. What I mean by that is if we set someone's pressures for CPAP were 10, but their pressures for C-Flex were C-Flex 10 with a relief of 3, well then it's possible that what they're really getting is a bi-level type device of 10 over 8. So C-Flex might work for some people. In our own uh, clinical experience, we have not found C-Flex to be as effective as bi-level. So when we see a UARS patient, we tend to move from CPEP to bi-level fairly quickly in the sleep lab environment to try to sort that question out right away. Now, therefore, in terms of your question of, you know, should you consider bi-level instead of C-Flex, well, that would be a matter you would discuss with your doctor because the most important thing is how did you respond? If you if, if the doctor feels you've responded very well to C-Flex, you woke up the next morning and felt that you had a good response, or you gave it a short you know, one-month trial where you leased the device and you felt it was working well, then it's probably a good device. But if those questions are mixed responses, you're not quite sure about how well you're responding, and there were still some, let's say, flow limitation or extra arousals, or you didn't have as much REM sleep on your you know, last study, that could be a sign that you need you know, some of these more advanced devices. In our clinical work, uh, almost every UARS patient is on some type of bi-level device. And as we've been talking about over this last year, we have a number of patients on the auto bi-level devices, and even some of them now go on to the adaptive servo ventilation devices because the UAR UARS patients often are individuals that suffer from some underlying anxiety in our clinical experience and therefore they seem to be more at risk for developing some of these central apneas that would then trigger the need for the ASV device. So as you can see there's a whole range of devices that might uh, be useful for somebody and of course the big tactical question is insurance wise is that most places are not uh, able to provide an opportunity for people to use device after device after device. You've got to settle on one. You usually have to use it for about five years. So an ideal place to find out this information is in the sleep lab. And a paper was actually published about this just a couple years ago, I think by Dr. Morgenthaler, where they actually talked about how you can use CPAP, BiPAP, and ASV all on the same night of the titration uh, just to try to figure out you know, this information. And we've been trying to adopt some of that uh, model into our um, work as well.